okay so this is the solution to the problem remove boxes it's labeled hard and as the user dimitri puts it one of the top 10 most difficult problems on lead code you would assume the solution to be complicated but it's actually really really simple okay let's talk about the problem itself first and then we'll slowly build up to the solution you're given several boxes of different colors represented by different positive numbers taking the case of one three two 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 so on and so forth you have say one as say the color green three as the color blue two as the color red so on and so forth okay once you set these colors what do you do you may experience several rounds to remove boxes until there are no round until there's no box left. So the goal is to somehow remove these boxes from the list until you have an empty list. Okay. Each time you choose some continuous boxes with the same color, remove them and get K star K points. What you're trying to do here is you look at this sequence of threes and you look at it and say, okay, sort of compressing them and removing them out of the list means that since their length is three, I'll get a score of three squared, three times three. Uh, so once you remove it, obviously the list will change and sort of you can just iteratively select the best possible option, combine them, compress them and remove them from the list. Each time you do this, you get some amount of points. Now the goal is to return the maximum amount of points you can get. So what's like already being hinted at? One thing is you may not know at any given point of time what's the best solution. You can only look at the current grouping right now and based on that, you have to make the decision. It's obviously not a good idea and the way you get out of this is by thinking recursively. You'll look at the current list, you'll get the best possible answer right now and whatever is later, we'll figure out later. We'll just do it recursively. Okay. You have the current answer and recursively you will find the answer for all of your children. Get their answer, get the best possible answer from them. Since the goal is to return maximum points, we'll get the maximum possible answer from them. Combine them to your own and send it. That will be the solution. Okay. What's the other thing? The second thing that is coming into play here. If you have a sequence of these three elements, these three same elements, you want to combine and compress all of them at once so that you get a length of three. If instead you were to look at these two here and these two again separately, so two twos and then one two separately, you'll get a score of four here and a score of one here, giving you a total of five. If you combine all of these three together, you'll get a score of nine, which is obviously much better. So this is like, these are two key points we'll keep in mind, recursion and greedily selecting sort of the best possible longest continuous sequence. Okay, we'll actually code this up. Uh, before that, some sort of visual uh, help if you need. Again, let's take a case of uh, three twos, two threes, and then four fours. This will just sort of bring out what the flavor of this question is. So these twos have a length of three, we'll keep three in mind. Then we'll send the remaining two recurs later on. And so in the later on part, we'll look at these three twos, these two threes, which can be paired together. And whatever is remaining, we can send it on for later use. The current score right now is two squared. Three squared was originally considered to four and two squared right now. Of these now remaining four fours, you'll also look at their length. The maximum possible length is four. And so you'll add four squared to the answer. Pretty simple, pretty clean, pretty neat. Okay. Let's actually code this up because it's going to form a part of our solution. We'll have a DP function going from L to R. And uh, at the end, we'll return the score of whatever is returned by this DP. L will be zero. We're starting L at here and R is sort of bounding the length of the list. So R will be maximum over here. Just for the sake of convenience, we're going to make uh, L and R both inclusive, pointing to exact values in the list. This is just for the sake of convenience. So we'll put length as length of boxes, but we'll do minus one here because it's an index right now. Okay, when will this DP uh, end? It will end when 
l is greater than r in that case return zero integer because we're going to return an integer over here because the answer is a maximum possible answer okay let's look at that beautiful looking case over here with everything was sort of split out very nicely okay what are we doing in this case we want to somehow look at the current element l and the next element l plus one and we want to say if both of them are same you want to sort of increase these counters and keep a track of how long is the sequence so we'll also have a count which says how long is the sequence and using l and l plus one we're going to make use of we're going to say them if this is equal to boxes of this basically saying hey is the lth element this one the same as l plus one th element if that is the case then that's good and what we'll do here is we'll do l plus one equals to one and count plus equals to one because we have found a sort of longer sequence again this is greedily sort of picking the longest possible thing you can ever get okay once we have that what do we do um mm, by the way there's some uh, again implementation level level detail l plus one should be always less than equals to r that's because we don't want actually it's stepping out of the boxes list over here so we'll say okay it could be l plus one could be maximum equals to r r being length of boxes minus one uh, take a minute to pause and think about what's happening but it should make sense also uh now at this point we've reached sort of the boundary l is pointing here and l plus one is pointing here we've sort of combined and consumed all of these tools now time to consider that in the answer so we'll have count count squared and we'll leave out whatever is remaining for the dp to handle so l is pointing here and l plus one is pointing here so we'll start the dp from l plus one onwards we'll go l plus one and we'll go all the way up to r pretty simple one small implementation detail again is that look at l and l plus one l is here in the initial straight l plus one in the second two you combine you look at both of them say they are good to go and you move l and l plus one over here you increase the count by one you look at both of these again increase the count by one again and let the pointers be now this l here and l plus one here at this point you break the loop but also at this point what is the count it's actually only two so we'll do count plus one square again uh, take a minute to think about it pause if you want here cool let's move on to just returning this and we'll be done let's take a test case of whatever we have seen here triple two two threes and then four fours and let's see if it works it should work okay great so this is sort of working for a neat and clean case what if things are more complicated what if we have a case like this it's exactly the same as above with, with three twos added at the end now what is the most optimal answer in this case see if we were to go by the logic we have seen above we would look at these two here then threes then fours and then twos again, giving us this 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 three squared two squared four squared and then three squared again but what's the biggest flaw here you can look at these trees first instead of looking at this three pairs uh, you can look at both of these threes and consume them, compress and remove them. You'll get a score of four, two squared. You can also do the same for these fours over here. You'll get a score of four squared. Cool again. But when you remove both of them, what's left? What's left is a bunch of twos over here and a bunch of twos over here. Now what's the best possible answer? It's not three squared plus three squared. It's six squared. Because now the longest possible length is not three and three, it's a total of six. Somehow we need to jump over this. Somehow we need to be able to consider what's out there in the future 
and be able to jump to that point. Two things as I again to mention here quickly. First, we need to find a valid sort of landing point for this jump. We are at two and we can only jump to another two. Any other value will never make any sense. So we'll look at this two over here, which is our starting point, and we'll jump to a value here, somewhere around here, which is again a two. Once you've found a landing point, you can now again continue this count onwards. This count is not anymore from zero now. You're starting from whatever you left it over here, right? You have three twos over here, you jump, and now you don't want to start from zero, but from four, and then five, and then six. That's the goal, right? We'll talk about what happens to this, whatever's remaining in the middle, three, three, and four fours. We'll come to that very second, very soon, but let's implement that part now. We say is that I'm going to iterate over all of the remaining values from L plus one all the way up till R plus one. Again, R plus one because R is inclusive and Python will do plus one here as like it won't go to R plus one. It will go to go till R plus one, only touch R plus one, but go till R, exactly R. So again, implementation level detail you want to keep in mind. Then we'll do answer equals to max of the answer and Again, like the point is to have the maximum possible of what these children could give you. So we'll take the maximum here. And what do we want it to be the maximum of? We want it to be the maximum of whatever is the value here. This is the current L, but this is now the M, the point at which we are landing upon. So we'll consider M here. And we want to go all the way up till R. The count will no longer be zero, but the count initially here. Somehow we also need to convey this information. So instead of doing this, we'll just do this. The rest of the part remains exactly as is. I know, right? It just makes solution a lot more cooler. By the way, this is assuming that M is a valid landing point, but it's only a valid landing point when, when this is a two over here and this is a two over here. Both of these values are same. The sort of jumping starting point and the landing point are the same. It's only same when if boxes of M is the same as boxes of L. Is it L or L plus one, by the way? This is confusing you right now. Is it L or L plus one? It's L. We're starting it from L plus one over here because in this case, L was here and L plus one was here. And we wanted to start the recursion from this point on. That's why it was L plus one over here. But now we just want L. And so we'll keep L in mind here. If that is true, then we want to go and jump. One more thing, is it count or is it count plus one? As we saw above, this count is not being considered appropriately and we do count plus one here. So we'll also, also have to do count plus one over here. Okay, now what's remaining? There's still something missing is the part in the middle over here which we jumped over what do we do of this somehow we also need to consider it in a dp so we'll just have another dp function take care of it where do we start we'll start from l plus one now and where till we go m minus one m is inclusive by the way over here pause if you want to right now and think about why that's happening but it should be obvious We'll start from L plus one now and go till M minus one. Again, L is here, M is here. And so we'll start from L plus one, go all the way up till M minus one, both inclusive. And the count is now zero. And uh, this is it for the answer. Let's modify this test case to consider twos here. And we'll look at the answer now. Hopefully all of this in nicest things also works out. Okay, great, it does. Uh, this is, by the way, a DP question. So surprise, surprise, we are going to do LRU cache as none. Again, it's a DP question. You want to memoize things. Otherwise, it's, by the way, uh, yeah, it's order of n cube space complexity. So very messy, but beautiful nonetheless. Okay, we'll submit this for a quick check. And here we go. 
Cool. So I would talk about the time complexity and some write-ups mention it's n to the power of four, but I don't exactly understand. If any of you do, please let me know in the comments below or refer to whatever sources you want. More than happy to listen to that. And uh, yeah, again, if you have any more questions, suggestions, feedbacks, additions to this question, let me know below. Uh, cool. Yeah, very fun question, complicated and yet so simple. So, so simple code. Cool. This is it for the solution of remove boxes. Bye bye.